well i'm gonna be bringing you ball coco live and direct right now so we can begin our chat hey hi Susan. good afternoon good afternoon <laughs> Welcome to Africa Rise with Susan West. Thank you for having me on your show. For people joining us on Instagram, I think there's a little bit of um, network issues because I'm not able to see Yibo on screen, but just stick with us. I'm sure he's going to, he's going to appear there as well. <laughs> well, so let's start this talk about how to harness African cultures, for the uh, purpose of economic gain by, you know, um, introducing it to the world for, for tourism purposes. So I'm going to start by saying there are many definitions of culture, but according to UNESCO, culture is the set of distinctive spiritual material, intellectual, and emotional features of society or social group that encompasses not only art and literature, but lifestyle, ways of living, value systems, traditions, and beliefs. So what does culture mean to you, Yibo Koko? Culture, culture is a way of life. It's an everyday, culture is a way of life. It's an everyday activity for me. Uh, it's a way of a life of a people um, within a particular community, state, or region. So basically, it is what it is. It is a way of life. It is a way of life for you, but okay, that's it. It's, it's about our food, it's about our, our clothes, it's about the where we live, it's about the language we speak, it's about the, you know, just everything. So um, I'm going to go on to ask you, from the over 3,000 different um, ethnic groups speaking more than 2,100 different languages in all of Africa, there is no shortage of inspiration to cultivate from a modern presentation of Africa's rich diversity of cultural heritage. How can we harness our rich diversity from, you know, the various cultures for economic gains? Um, can, you, can you hear me? I can hear you clearly. Okay, so basically the key is, co is, is collaboration. I mean, wherever you are, in your village, in your city, in your states, <laughs> we all need to collaborate. Without collaboration, we can't exactly key in into the existing economical space. Hmm. Because um, the West have, you know, like over the years, the media blitz, whatever it is that you hear about Africa is from the perspective of the West. Right. We don't, we don't tell our stories. Mm. And even when we do, we're not exactly, you know, in the framework of representing that which is completely us. Mm. Because we still tend to copy a bit of that which is from the West. And if you lack originality, you lose the core essence of what your culture, mm. what is your tradition. I mean, you can borrow a bit of technology, but the content still remains very African. Mm. But the key to developing uh, what we have is our ability to collaborate with one another, a bit in the village circle, like I said, or in the state or wherever, if we do not collaborate, we're not able to have our culture, our tradition, our way of life expressed outwardly if we want it to, uh, to be. Mm. Right. So um, is it possible, though, that Africa can actually tap into her deposits of cultural 
heritage without a change of attitude in the sense that um, if we are um, seeing our culture, our cultures as evil, as inferior, as dirt or dirty, how can we then appreciate it enough to be able to sell it to the rest of the world? The, the, the primary bliss, beauty, the charm, the fantastic uh, uh, enabling circumstances surrounding the African culture is its mythic, mythical uh, variety. And predominantly, Africans have become Christians. And Muslims. And the, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm let, okay, yeah, I'm not. Okay, so <laughs> Muslims and Christians. But let me come from the Christian perspective because I understand that better. Right. So faith-based organizations, naturally, within the African uh, continent, and as propagated by Felakuti, it causes colonial mentality. Yeah. And because of colonial mentality, we now jettison what is rich about us, what is mythical about us. So you watch Thor, you watch Aquaman, <laughs> you watch Cinderella, <laughs> you watch all of the, the beauty of European culture on TV. But rather than use the platform to express what is good about us, mm. we begin by investigating that which is ours. Mm -hmm. And by so doing, you reduce the beauty of expressing and um, selling yourself out to those who do not know. Mm. So these are the challenges we have. Yeah, so how, how are we going to be able to change the attitude towards our culture? That is not evil after all. Yes, I we I understand. Of course, even for me, it's difficult sometimes to remove yourself from your Christian beliefs. But that's all conditioning. It's not everything about our culture that is is bad. I mean, even the the Western cultures that we we like to copy wasn't always one hundred percent perfect or fantastic. But with time, they they learn to evolve and evolve and evolve, and they got to where they are now. So how do we begin to change attitudes of our people okay, me, towards our culture practices or culture um our way of life okay so let me let me borrow from your reference to the european culture and civilization yeah who are the vikings who are the pirates who are the buccaneers mm. Who are the mafias? So, from the European history, if you go through, or even when they show their movies, you see that they were more like brigands, highway robbers, mm -hmm. <laughs> they would go to the villages, you know. But it was a history that had to do with conquering your neighbor. Mm. And that was the approach they were used to express themselves. They were conquistadors. And the more they conquered, the more they pushed their civilization, the more they pushed their story. Mm. Now, coming from Africa, where the tragedy is that we don't tell our stories ourselves, and we don't have you know, as much documentations as we want. So our stories are from oral tradition. Mm. And most of these traditions have not been passed on to the contemporary uh, African. Mm. And the contemporary African, they have more savvy with technology mm -hmm. because they have, you know, education across the coast have empowered them. Mm. But you now see that they're also influenced by the Western orientation mm. in telling stories. And if you do not know your story, if you don't know your background, 
then you can you can tell it. Mm. So you see that for tourism to thrive economically, uh, believing in the green and blue economy, mm. you see that we need a reorientation. So from media wise, we need to begin to show the receptive nature of Africa. Mm. And if, if you balance um, um, this, the Marvel, the Marvel uh, movie, what's it called again? Black Panther. Black Panther. So you, you see that the, the Black Panther switched from the slave narrative mm -hmm. to a utopian Africa. Mm -hmm the ideal Africa, mm -hmm. the Africa before the coming of the European. Mm. And everybody keyed into that. Mm. Another movie that also showed the beauty of Africa from the cultural perspective is Eddie Murphy's Coming to America. Right. You, so if you juxtapose these movies within the, Africans, within the uh, European or the world space, mm -hmm. you see that it captured the beauty of the, the culture of Africa. Sound. I can hear Sorry, you now. Uh, I can hear you now. Um, so I'm just saying that the the African must reorientate. I mean, we need to re we have a reorientation, right? Of understanding what is rich about our culture, mm -hmm. understanding the special implications of our the use of what we have within our space, the economical viabilities of it all, mm -hmm. and to know that culture, which is a way of life, is bankable is marketable mm. and then we can you know grow wealth without understanding right without basic understanding then we are limited to being uh, in the dark and then we we'll still be grouping mm. right you know um when you go to southern africa when you go to southern africa or eastern africa they're not as much um struggling like we are in in west africa with um showing off identifying with our tradition and culture well i would say that in, on, in west africa with ghana i would give it's kudos to ghana because everywhere you see ghanaians they are proudly ghanaians they they they, they are not um they're not struggling to be able to marry their modern personalities with their traditional ways of doing things so how how is the rest of africa that haven't been able to catch up with what southern you know say south africa in kenya you know how they've been able to tap into what they have in their um immediate environment for tourism purposes how are we going to be able to what are we going to begin to do to see that we also attract tourists tourism to these parts of Africa that haven't yet um, be, um, known how to, you know, tap into that um, opportunity. Okay, so the same thing goes again, no matter how we go left, right, center, back, it's still the reorientation, reawakening and understanding that the media space, which is global, mm. needs to know more about who we are, mm. what we have, and the potentials of green wealth from Africa. Mm. Constructively, being able to work with Africans in diaspora, focus on that. We have Africans in diaspora that are qualified across board, that once we understand that blue mentality, <laughs> we need to leave our system completely. Mm. 
then the collaboration comes back. Now, South Africa is still influenced by uh, what um, the white the white influence. Mm. So, in terms of um, um, civilization. Your sound. You see that? Can you unmute yourself on on Facebook? I'm not even there. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so, um, sorry, my 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 just got jarred with my th uh, stream of thought. So you see that the influence of the the white South African. An infrastructural development mm. in the predominant white areas, right? Still have some fantastic and amazing um, look and feel of. Uh, sorry. Any, um, devices here, I'm trying to work on the same space. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, the architectural designs that you have with the white structure in South Africa and development, you know, will have you want to visit South Africa because there have been some uh, European feel you know, we are caught up. So, but even if they have been there for so long, basic infrastructures have been put in place. Now, that does not mean that you're not getting similar things in other African uh, um, countries. One of the major things about Africa is our ability to be very receptive, embracing that's what they have in Ghana. In Ghana, I mean, Aquaba, welcome, is key. So when you're talking about the year of the return in Accra and the whole of Ghana, predominantly the strength of, of the Ghanaian government mm. is that hospitality. And for you to experience Africa through Ghana. So if that experience is understood across the West, the South, the East and the North of Africa, and as a balance for that collaboration across the continent, because our stories are rich. Yeah. Our culture very rich. Our tradition very rich. So these are the things that people want to experience so it's the experience that is key right you know also um this back and forth with um jollof rice jollof rice is so famous right now all, all around the world one of the things that africans have not been able to do like the chinese and the indians is using their food to demonstrate who they are to advertise themselves how would you say we can begin to inculcate these things? First of all, in the diaspora, especially here in London, I will tell you, it's far cheaper to go into a Chinese restaurant to eat than going to a, an African restaurant to eat. So one of the things that I know for sure is pricing is not good at all. So in your opinion, how can we begin to use our foods, make our food very popular like the Chinese have been able to do, the Indians have been able to do, Mexicans have been able to do? you know, to introduce to the rest of the world? Uh, but I think coming again from your experience back in London, I think the way you import things from West Africa into London is different from the ways you import things from India and China into London. So that disparity in terms of pricing will influence how the Nigerian or the West African who wants to sell to make profit. Mm. So that's key anyway. So um, 
but understanding. So this we have to see go back to the beginning. Mm. Understanding that Oxford Street is not in West Africa. Uh, Dubai is not in West Africa. So these two countries, they have architectural bliss. One is in the Shakespearean English era, and one is in the modern era. Africa is caught in between, mm. because even when we do not have the ideal utopian architecture, we have history. When you when you we keep saying history. sorry to cut you, when you keep saying architecture, architecture, is it all um in my opinion, when when um the Western people or the white people or foreigners go to South Africa or Kenya, they are not looking for you know the, the massive, the um the big buildings that are built because where they're coming from have all these facilities anyway. What what they want to do is see the local people for who they are. They want to see the local people, the way they live, the way they 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 socialize, the way everything about us is what they want to see. But because we're begin, we're not understanding. We're thinking. So when you keep going on about architecture, we already have architecture, don't we? We just have it no, in no, African no, no, style. Wait, wait, Susan, Susan, let me let, let's call it speed is speed, right? If um, a Western media wants to come into Nigeria. Mm to do uh, a documentary, they would rather shoot somewhere in Ajengule, somewhere in the slums of uh, the Delta. Mm -hmm. They won't come to Lekki. Mm -hmm. They don't want to go to Abuja. Mm -hmm. Because that perception that they already have, mm -hmm. they want to amplify it more, mm -hmm. that we still jump on top of trees in Africa. Mm -hmm. So when they come into Africa, they still want you to live in that rural setting where they have zebras, game rivers, and the reserves. They, 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 so mentally, or oh, they want to go to nature, where the nature is, which kind of nonsense talk about. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's like, like I said, and that is why Black Panther resonated. Because in front of the Black Panther, mm. you know, even when they created a public village, you know, they had colors and then they tried to have urban wear. Mm -hmm. Behind the village, once you get into the forest, then you now see the architecture of probably what we heard about the civilization of Egypt. You know, mm. so when I mean infrastructural growth and architecture, I mean, if you go to a hotel, you want to have a five star hotel anyway, mm -hmm. home away from home. So, even when you don't have that in some African countries, yeah, so I borrow from you that we have a hospitality that they want to come to see. Mm. Uh, inside the hut, yeah, cooking with firewood, you know, make Bono come play for Africa. Mm. <laughs> you know, I want, I want, I was, I, I want, I'm going to cut you. I'm going to get in there again. The reason I'm doing this is because our way of life is totally different from the Western world. I mean, let me use for example. I know what aside. I know what aside in River State in Port Harcourt. Now, is it not possible that? that we can come up with a concept of still having the core, you know, water side, but in a more, um, um, in a more um, put in, not, not big buildings, you can still reflect the idea of water side and have the spirit of water side by just bringing in a little bit here and there of some kind of an organized way of building the structures and still sell what aside to the rest of the world because that's what we have that is different from what they have. Yes, yeah, Susan. Um, the water side or the waterfront. Mm -hmm. um, you might not want to have 
a Maldive water sign, which is, you know, all the blue designs, you know, hot mm -hmm. within the sea, you know. But by the banks of the river, across the rivers of Africa, yeah. be in the ocean or the creeks, the fishing settlements, understanding that as a way of life mm. is an attraction for the tourists. Right. It has nothing to do with infrastructure because it is a way of life. Mm. Right. It is our ability to be completely receptive to people coming in to see that way of life mm. without endangering the visitor is paramount to our existence and our economic viability of tourism. Right. Because then what you don't have with architecture, like, okay, um, and, uh, in London there, so within the Southeast, so let's say um, uh, from Thamesmead and I think West, by River Thames there, you have all of those houses that conform to the banks. Mm. And you see how the government builds for you to come down and view the sea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even if you're not jumping in and activities are going on, yeah. but you can see the beauty of that stretch. Although it's, it's, it's concrete yeah. for your own safety, but here, ours is more very sandy. Mm. So how are we able to clear the debris mm. that have, you know, contaminated our waterfronts? Mm -hmm. How do we understand that in its complete simplicity of having a serene water side, yeah. that is enough for anybody to come to enjoy? So it still borders on on orientation okay i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna just ask you to just hold that thought because when we come back to you we're gonna continue from there um right about now ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna be introducing to us gift aproko gift aproko is he's he's a comedian i've come to know lately but i am super super i'm a super fan but just before i bring him on just give me a moment to introduce him to you by playing a clip the church way i mean they attend the the pastor say man they come again I work. Mm, the only time where they are they work for the church now when pastor go they call me come altar come carry me day they give example of devil one day in into in altar call say if you want to give your life to Christ come out and nah, nah, I can't go out to in they tell me say say make I go back <laughs> nah, I can't they ask and say why they say my go back he say say no be every life God want One time like that, he can't stop me, say, say my name, they follow them, they take Holy Communion again. <laughs> oh, I, I, can't, I can't go ask and say, why, why no Grima, they take Holy Communion again? He say, say no like the way why they chop the bread. <laughs> he say, wait, he say, Say they are they are they chop I'm like say it is sweet me say Jesus die. Right, welcome back. Um I'm gonna bring gift apoko right away. Hello, gift. Hello. Oh wow, it's a pleasure having you on Africa Rise. Welcome. So without taking too much of yeah, your time. Thank you. The first, the first mm. thing I want to ask you is, how did you start, and why the devil joke about yourself? Uh, I, I I started years ago in bio. 
it was pretty tough because I, I noticed I was creating jokes about different things, cracking jokes about different people, and wherever I went, everybody kept laughing, not to my jokes, but to my look. So <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I go on stage before I say what people are already bursting in laughter, and so I decided, okay, let me talk about myself and see where it gets me. So when right. I started talking about myself and everything just everything just started going on fine and that was how i got to lagos and decided to talk about myself some more right um i i would like to say that one of the ways you got me is your style you, you have a bit of a weird style of of bringing across your message when i listened to that joke i played is when people were laughing and clapping and talking and like really excited and um, happy um you really cracking them up and then you just go wait they <laughs> Why is it like this? Do you know what? Right about now, just take it away and 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 make us laugh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see, and um, so I I would really continue from where where I stopped, where I stopped at that joke. Yeah, I I stopped somewhere because I I didn't want to continue. Because if I had said the other things, maybe I would have lost some friends and followers. So I I decided to stop where I, where I did. But the, the truth is, the story did not end there. It continued. Yeah. Especially, yeah, especially when I when I went to to look for a job. Uh, yeah. I went I went to so many places and uh, nobody took me except a new a new casting uh, uh, musician. Yeah, yeah, one TV station like that. Yeah, they took me and they said they're going to take me as a newscaster, but on one condition. <laughs> <laughs> they said I can only read bad news. You can so, you can only do what? Yeah. They are only going to let me read bad news. Bad news. <laughs> yeah, like 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 obituary and things like that. Mm -hmm. So so when I started reading obituary news, it got to a point they came and said I should stop working. They said people are complaining. People are complaining that when I read obituary news, there's always joy on my face. Like I'm happy the people die. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you and your face? I don't understand. Why do you well, always it, see? The, the thing is, it, it, see, it, it started years ago when I was small. Even when I was in school. Yeah. When I was in school, sometimes sometimes our teacher would come into the class and she would be like, uh, class, I want you all to draw me a monkey. And then everyone starts looking at me. Oh! Did you yeah, ever and, feel did you feel offended at any point? Did you feel um, depressed or unhappy about that? No, no, no. I, I never felt depressed until... I, I never knew they were looking at me because they wanted to draw me in place of a monkey. So <laughs> I, uh, where, where I got upset was when some of them started telling me not to shake. I, I, I'm, I'm a... <laughs> yeah, drawing. They said, don't shake. Okay, just stay like that. You shake. Okay, now this is one of the things that happens in Nigeria. Oh, never. <laughs> I'm not. Whenever a you're trying to do something good, yeah, when, uh, yeah. Whenever you're trying to do something good, they just come up. They just come and take the light. Do you think it's also about yeah, face now? Nepa it. is dealing with you like this. Do you think it's also about your face? <laughs> Probably Nepa is getting the vibes. <laughs> yeah, they. Yeah, they don't they, they, they don't they don't want me to go international with this face because they are scared I might bring more enemies to Nigeria than friends. So oh no. Oh no. I got to keep taking joke. the light to stop me. That's a joke. Okay, you know what we're <laughs> gonna do? We're gonna come back to you. We're gonna go back to Yibo Coco and then we're gonna come back to you, okay. Yibo Oh yes, I'm sure you heard. Um, by the way, you, you're not you're no longer on uh, on our um, broadcast on Instagram, Yivo. <laughs> okay. So oh, yes. I'm sure I can still watch you from there anyway. By the way, you're not you're no longer on uh, on our um, broadcast on Instagram. On Instagram, Yivo. <laughs> wow. Okay. So oh yes, I'm sure I can still watch you from there. Anyway. I can't hear you. Um, no, I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? 
that's because you're not on Instagram, okay? Um, on mute. I requested, I requested for, I've joined you. Can you hear me now? I can. Okay. okay. Very good. That's because you're not on Instagram, okay? Um, on mute. Hmm. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, I can. I can hear you. Right. Can you hear me now? I can. Okay. Can you hear me now? It's everything okay now. Can't hear him. Sorry, guys. Let me get, let me get rid of the Instagram because. Can you hear me now? It's everything okay now. No. Yeah. Um, well, um, just let's you heard. Let's not let's not feel the, the the vibe I was getting from Gift Aproko. The guy okay. is crazy. The guy is crazy. I, I saw you laughing in the background to his jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and you yourself uh, are Indian. So what was uh, it that, yeah. that was so good that cracked you up? Yeah, you know what. I don't want to sound very academic, but they say laughter freely given begets yet another laughter. Right. So yeah. Uh, so I mean. The best, so when you use your story to tell your story, it mm. becomes better because mm -hmm. nobody takes offense. Right. You know, because you're talking about yourself anyway. So the incongruity, you know, comes out, especially when he says um, everybody was looking at him, but at the time when they said, don't move, that's when he knew that they were drawing him. So that's, that was just <laughs> utter <laughs> <Right. crazy>. so, <laughs> bringing it, oh, bringing it to, back to our discussion, Telling your story yourself, I yeah. want I want you to inspire Africans, young Africans, Nigerians, every every African around the world, especially continental Africans. Inspire us on why. I'll give you an example. You can see I have my African, my Afro. For a very long time, we we have forgotten how to take care of our hair, our African hair, permed hair. When a lot of people started doing it, I was shying away from it because I thought, how am I going to care for this hair? But something happened that made me decide I was going to cut off my beautiful, long, permed hair because I have a, a daughter and the love she has for my permed hair and she's got African virgin hair was too much. And I thought, I'm suffering, I'm struggling with this mindset because there was nobody when we were growing up to make us understand how beautiful our African hair is and to make sure that my daughter is not um, looking at permed hair or, or European um, straight hair as the only beautiful kind of hair, I cut my hair and I started growing African hair. You can see the, the, the virgin African hair is taking off, like people are beginning to culture their African hair and they're proud of it. So it means that there's a lot that we can achieve once there is models out there. Attitudes can be changed. So what are the things you're going to advise, Afri continental Africans especially, on how uh, to groove back if, with their... If, if I have to borrow a leaf from your reference about your hair, mm. my family, my, I have my wife and my daughter. My wife is yellow CC, and if you know anything about the natural hair, all over the world. Yellow Sissi is a brand. And for over um, 12 plus years or 15 years, she's, she's had a natural hair. And my daughter's hair is just all over a beautiful thing. So I am, you can see my hand now. You can see the African beads, the, the local beads made around there. It, I didn't buy them on the internet. I got them from the African shop here. Right. We need, we need to tell our stories. We need to fuse the technology of the West Mm. and the content of Africa mm. to tell our stories. Fuse technology of the West with yes, the content of Africa. the content of Africa. Africa to tell our stories. Yeah. And from the mythology of oral tradition mm. as propagated by our forefathers, mm. our grandfathers, our fathers, if they still remember to tell these stories, then they can use their talented gift from God to expand the stories. In the West today, they want to talk about an ap apocalyptic war.
So you see that they're talking about a feature that has been destroyed. Mm. You know, so it's either it's a matrix. You know, it is something because culturally they have outlived all of the stories. And that's why in 2019, 2018, we had a lot of repeats mm. of the Western stories. So you have one, two, three, because, I mean, so they were looking at the, the marketability, not in terms of the tradition and history of anything. So mm -hmm. Africans need to collaborate to tell the stories. And by the time you tell your stories, you're beginning a new chapter mm -hmm. into understanding the rich people of Africa. Mm -hmm. We can't continue uh, letting Mongo Park and all of the stories about Africa. Yeah, yeah, because that's all they say. So Alan Quarterman's, uh, King Solomon's Mines, all of those stories about Tarzan and Kurak, you know, which is more from the point of view of the Europeans. These are the stories that they keep. And every time Tarzan comes from Europe, he mm. still gets into Africa that is leading with creeks and, you know, living in huts. Mm -hmm. And those are the kind of things that they want to still see because these are the things that are pro they have propagated all over. Mm. I, I went to St. Catherine's in Oxford and, and then a stint at the Universal Studios in Hollywood. So from Oxford to Hollywood, the key thing about film study was still using the African story to do exceedingly well with the technology of the West. Mm. So if you learn from them, because Let's go back to the word infrastructure again. So infrastructure still deals with technology. Mm. The average 16-year-old child, boy or girl, who goes to school in Europe to study, by mm. 26, the person will probably have a, a second degree or a third degree. Mm. And how do they apply those degrees in Africa? Mm. Most people don't come back because in Africa, opportunities to continue in Africa, the politicians have taken over. So mm. you see that white collar people go to become shop supervisors in the UK or in America, as opposed to what they have studied in the past um, 10 years mm. across the continent. So what do we do? We need to agree with ourselves that we need to collaborate to tell our stories more. Like Ghana, let the, uh, the diaspora have the strength and the need. Look at what is happening in America. If Africa was that receptive place for them to come back, mm. then they can come to the countries of their choice in Africa and yeah. then help develop Africa. Because China, the Europeans are still wanting to come into Africa to still dig out our wealth to grow their own uh, 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 continent or their own countries. Right. So um, coming back to you talking about infrastructure and um, all these things, these are not things that um, ordinary people or individuals are going to be able to come up with. Now you're in, in government. I know that you're, you're with the River State government. What's, what, what are the things you're doing differently as someone from entertainment background and now in government? What are the things you're doing differently to promote, um, to change um, the, the, the way things are done? as um, in, to encourage tourism or cultural um, appreciation. Okay, so, I mean, so let's narrow it down to the state where I'm working for the government. The government has a vision. The vision is to create wealth and employment within the tourism space. Right. Now, we have 23 local government areas with over 20 ethnic uh, groups in River State. Mm we still go back to what is tourism. Right. So if you do the statistics, do the research, you're from Port Harcourt, so you know that we're still looking at the zoo in Slaughter as tourism. Mm. We still look at Tourist Beach as <laughs> tourism. Uh, then Steve had an idea to build the Saka Resort. So these are the three major components of our understanding of what tourism is. So in our rich diversity, 23 local government areas across over 20 ethnic groups with different languages, mm. it becomes a priority to basically make the people understand what tourism is. It's key because without that communal understanding, 
mm. we're going to have issues. And because when they understand that, they become patriotic, mm. they become entrepreneurial, and they're going to grow wealth because yeah. the person who is drying fish, the person who is cooking bullet, yes. uh, roasting bullet, the person who is dancing a rare, the person who has a fashion that is great, yes. all of these things come together, mm. you know, to making our communities rich and driving people into those into that space. So That's our it. job with the agency is first and foremost to make the people understand in its elementary level mm. what is tourism. Once we understand what that is. Mm. And that economically it's viable within the green and the green and uh, the green and blue economy. We have a lot of waterfront and the sea in the whole of River State. So what we're doing is to structure, not to rely on, on the politics of oil and gas, mm -hmm. because as an artist, as an administrator within the art form, yeah. and you know that the age is not on our side anymore. So you need to still collaborate with the younger ones. So you have your experience. Then you have the young ones that are capable to you know, run around. But we have to collaborate with them because the young ones are the ones that understand the media space, that yes. the ones that can push out content, mm -hmm. that the ones that know all of the technicalities on how to uh, push out content. So our job now becomes to generate the content. And while we generate the content, it becomes collaborative because all the 20 local government areas in all the ethnic groups in River State, you know, mm -hmm. once that understanding that it's not just about Port Harcourt as a yeah. local government area or Obiakbo or Ubrika or Ogu, but all of the local government areas to understand, just like you have the startup groups, you know, so you have young people that understand technology. You know, the SMEs, they know all of those things. We, for government has to understand that politics stops and ends at the base. The way of life of a people in terms of development must be keyed into. I'm not even talking about agriculture. I don't want to go into that area. I'm talking about the creative space. So we need to have people understand it. So their primary concern in the agency is to call on to everybody, all hands on deck. Because as intangible as it might seem, just like the soul, you don't see. Once you have a good soul, it becomes infectious. People will say, oh, man, Susan has a good soul, but you don't even see her soul. It's because she's nice. So once people understand that the soul of the city, the yeah. soul of the state, when it comes to the creative uh, space, is understood to be a receptive area, yeah. then it becomes a ground where people will want to experience the life of the people. So that's what different that we're going to do with the agency and that's what we're doing. Right, so just hold your thought. We're almost done, um, we're almost running out of time, but I'm gonna quickly bring Gift Aproko okay. again because I can see Nepa is his friend once again. Again, and okay. Back to you. <laughs> Gift, welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> So real, oh, quickly, uh, real quickly, before Nepa decides to do what they know best to do, take it away. Tell us a joke. Yeah, that, that, that's the thing. I like continuing from where I stopped. And where, where, I, stopped was, where I stopped was when I, when, when, I, when I almost got into trouble in school. Yeah, because I got really upset that day. But the, the one that really got me mad was when we, we went for excursion in this zoo. Yeah, they, they, they took us to the zoo and we saw every other animal. We saw the eye, we saw the lion, we saw the tiger, we saw the snake. We saw so many animals and then when it was time for us to see the gorilla, our teacher said we should start going back to going back to school. Like, there was no need to see that. We've already seen a map of that in school. So that was that was what really, really got me upset. But but you see, uh I don't know. I, I, I said this somewhere and they said it's going to cause problems. So I don't I don't know. Let, let, let me just tell you. I I noticed something. You see, I noticed the way my friends outside Nigeria see me. 
I, I went for an event. I went for an event, and uh, you know, you know, Oshomole was there. Uh, uh, Obatanjo, the former president of Nigeria, was there. <laughs> stop, stop, stop laughing. You don't even know where I'm going. So, so Obatanjo was there. Oshomole was there, and then uh, after the event, I decided to take a picture with them. Oh so, wow! Yeah, I took the picture and I posted it on Facebook. And then my, my friend who stays in America commented on the picture. He said, so good to see Nigerians celebrating Halloween. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that was a very loud laugh. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> the three that was, that was... in one photograph, how wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was during the Halloween period, so I, I, I really... <laughs> I really <laughs> fell for it. But, but, <laughs> but, but seriously, uh, uh, sometimes sometimes I get into trouble. Like I get into real trouble because of my yeah. looks sometimes. Yeah, like we got robbed. Uh, uh, we got robbed in a compound. There was a time we got robbed and I, I, called, I called the police. So they came and you know an Nigerian police, they behave. So I called them, they came. They came and they started searching everywhere. All the while they were checking, the, the GPO was just looking at me. <laughs> he was suspecting you for rubbing your yeah. own compound. <laughs> the, 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 next thing, the next thing he said was, come here. And then I, I went and he, he took me to one corner and he said, uh, tell me the truth. How many of you came to rob? <laughs> okay. okay. And I said, sir, sir, I, I was the one who called you. I called you, he said, yeah, that's how the guilty people, that's how they call us for. Uh, and, and then he went on, he said, he said, do you know you have forgotten yourself? I said, how did I forget myself? He said, uh, you are talking to me and you are still wearing the mask you came to last night. Okay, that's a joke now. Look at him. I almost felt no, 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 I'm serious. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Gift Aproko, thank you so much. Thank you so You're much welcome. for running out of time. Thank you so much. I'm You're definitely welcome. going to ask you to come back on this program as we go on. Yeah, yeah. because I'm, I'm going to have to give you a lot of time because you're cracking me up, and I know a lot of people. Yeah, I see a lot of people laughing on Facebook. Yes, <laughs> so thank you for honoring our invitation, and I'll see you again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> what can I do? Be the beauty of it all is it's in every of our communities in River State. So it's our ability, the same thing I'm talking about, technology and content, you yeah. know. And if we're able through the agency to making the citizen re understand mm. that we need to capture hospitality being receptive as a prerequisite, you know, for us to be able to do more of these things in our communities. Then we have people to train the trainers, you know, and then we can now bring out the roadmap to tourism. So we need, it's there already, we have already done, we have over um, 522 pages capturing every aspect of the creative industry within our communities in River State. Right. But we can't unveil that if we do not capture the essence of making everyone understand that all of this bile and anger that we get from the political parties, you know, fighting themselves, and the more they fight themselves, the more their fight, their utterances are put in the public and media space. And this things they put out there in the media space is what is captured as data. And right. these are the things people read about this, our communities as opposed to who we really are. So we need to continue, you know, strategically. Um, COVID-19 has, you know, positively or negatively has opened up a whole lot. So the idea is once everything is a bit calm now, we begin to reel out all that can be done to making people understand that the second brand, which right now is locked off for me to do this job, you know, you have it all over. In Bonnie, 
the colors of their costumes, their wealth of tradition is just unimaginable. Same thing goes to the Quere area. Same thing goes, do you know that, or your culture? In Andoni is the largest fishing uh, port uh, in the whole of West Africa. Mm. Oh, yes, Susan, yes. It's one, it's a, not the one of, it's the largest fishing village in the whole of West Africa. You can imagine if it is open. Um, I was doing an online course um, uh, while this is on. I've done three online courses. There's one that I did initially that the key uh, component of tourism was yeah. using the Tanzania uh, experience. And Tanzania, the waterfront, just like our water sites, mm -hmm. polluted with debris, you know. Mm -hmm. But the hospitality of getting visitors in white skin, if you want to say that, or our Oyubo people, because of how receptive those communities are and how they have put themselves on the net for people to read about them. You yeah. see that it's a traffic of people getting into that town. So right. for River State and what the agency is doing, we're, we're requesting that everybody, it has nothing to do with, oh, in don't come, now in don't go, join, I'm not, I'm a political. That's key. It's the brand that I wear, my, my circuit brand, which brought me into this job. And as an individual, I'm a political. I'm a rivers person first and foremost. That's, that's, that's who I am. I will remain that. But that does not take away the fact that we have been employed by the government. And the government has a vision. Our job is to make sure that we put into practice the vision of government without taking sides in any of the shenanigans going on. Maintaining the fact that we're from River State because in River State we are rich, and you're talking about the African economy in the green and blue space. River right. State is a microcosm of all of it, right? So that's why I keep repeating that all the strategies of those who know more than I do in terms of using the social media space, space mm -hmm. we must strategize. We must reawaken all that is us yes. that would have allowed in the, the, in the years when people want to serve in Port Harcourt, in the years people want to come to Port Harcourt over the weekend just to go to Aquarius, go to Dreams Night Club, go right. to Bus Stop, you know, all of those things that were stories that we, we can tell to the younger ones that have never experienced any of this because of uh, the high level of brigandage that is perceived to be as a way of life of a people. So right. we need to reawaken all of these things that we know that is key to develop. Once that is understood, this basic knowledge of tourism is understood, then every other thing is secondary. Right. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm just going to quickly take a few um, um, comments. Um, Diane Medway Smith says, I'm dancing. Wow, this brought back memories. But memories is just not where we want it to belong. We want it to become uh, a way of life, a daily thing where people can just come into your state, come into your village, come into your community. And these things are available on particular days on the streets for people to, you know. And then I have Helen D say, Chai is sweet meal. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got Apex War who says, um, hi, Yibo. Hi, Susan. There are loads of comments, but I can only take a few. I just want to say a big thank you for giving us your time on Africa Rise. But thank you, Susan. Before you go, do us an endorsement on African Rise with Susan West. Okay, so uh, keep watching African Rise with Susan West. Um, my agency, my brand, we're watching live. We keep watching, and it is the best place to get the news from the world, Susan West. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much, and my regards to your beautiful wife and, and daughters. And thank your you dog. very much. I'm not my dogs. Oh, they're here. They're, they're out there. Forget <laughs> <them. laughs> you, you, you didn't do a joke for us. Are you, are you ready to do a joke for us before you leave? Yes, do a uh, joke. I, I, I stopped doing a joke. So if you just give me some financial incentive, I'll tell a joke. Right now, I'd rather cry than tell a joke. 
Okay, I'm, I'm going to credit you. I'm going to credit you. <laughs> Whilst we're on air, just do a joke. You're motivated now. <laughs> I'm blank. Oh, okay. We'll wait for another time. Let let let's not let's not um, allow COVID era to take away the fun and the joy that we have in our lives. No, so don't be blind. No. I know I took you by uh, I took you by surprise. So we're of gonna course I know what you to talk now. What did they worry now? Before I don't know what you to talk. Oh yeah, talk. Your, your money no eta. You know they won't deceive me. No need. <laughs> we, you know, you see now we they talk about tourism and they talk like like no bring back this other part. Uh, so you're off the show. When you won't call me again, then I will come like the other one. Until then. What Susan West, Africa rise, the rise, oh, don't rise, leave you. So, means if I don't rise, if like sit down for one place, bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you. <laughs> oh, wow, I had fun today. I hope you did. I hope you did because I had a super time. This is Africa Rise with Susan West. And I just want to say a big thank you to all those who were able to keep a date with us, keep the time with us, watching live. I, I understand a lot of people do come in and, and, and watch later on. But I want to say thank you to all those who was uh, who, who um, joined us and was able to share our broadcast. This is Africa Rise. The truth is we need to begin to appreciate ourselves. I can never keep saying that and uh, we need to begin to package ourselves in everything african in everything african from head to toe in the way we talk in the things that we do we, we need to begin to market africa in the right light all right and whilst we keep projecting africa in the right light and saying all the right things doing all the right things the people the monies the investment the tourism will just follow suit and until next sunday when i see you again and of course as usual as we go into the week i will announce who the next guest is going to be i just want to say have a fabulous sunday and god bless you i love you all <laughs>